So we're here at NAM 2022 with Mike Kent from the MIDI Association. How are you, Mike? Great. Uh, NAM, it's great to be back at NAM after a couple of years without a show. Absolutely, yeah, <laughs> I can imagine. So yeah, um, tell us about MIDI 2.0. Uh, where are you at with it? Um, yeah. Well, you know, we, we spent uh, several years writing the core MIDI 2 specifications, and those were published uh, now two years ago, and we've been building on the, the core specs to extend them and add functionality. Um, but it's still the, the early days of MIDI 2.0. Um, and where we're at now in 2022 20, uh, is fundamentally we're prototyping. The MIDI Association has the specs, but we want to make sure that they're vetted and that, that, that things are working out well um, and that, that one device that implements MIDI 2.0 connects to another device that implements MIDI 2.0 and is as reliable as MIDI 1.0 has been for so many years. Um, and what what so, sort of advantages will MIDI 2.0 bring to, to MIDI for those who don't know? Ah, okay. So there are um, there's really advancements in, in uh, two areas. One is auto configurability and the other one is in the richness or density of, of, uh, of the data. So resolution is a part of that and timing accuracy and so on. Um, but the big change really between MIDI 1.0 and 2.0 is changing from a monologue, that is one device sends commands to another device, like play a note or stop playing a note, uh, and being a dialogue. So two devices talk to each other and say, what do you do, who are you, what, what do you work, how, how do you work? So the two devices can better auto-configure themselves. Uh, so less user requirement for configuration, and, and the devices can do a lot more themselves. And then once they've actually configured, the new protocol is a high-resolution protocol. So controls go from being generally 7-bit data to being 32-bit data. So that means where volume used to be 0 through 128 with 120, 128 steps, we now have 4 billion steps wow. uh, with 32-bit data. And so that kind of resolution and timing uh, resolution and richer data as well. So a note not, not only has velocity, but can include other articulation data in the note itself. And in terms of bandwidth, you're obviously going to be processing and sending more data with, with that high resolution. How, sure. how does the bandwidth kind of work with it? Well, bandwidth is, is uh, a MIDI 1.0 bandwidth was kind of established by the original interface of 5-pin DIN and, and a baud rate. Uh, but modern transports are, are much faster. And so, you know, today, USB is really the dominant transport for MIDI. And we can run uh, MIDI at, at high bandwidth there. Um, and so MIDI 2.0, we can run uh, the kind of bandwidth we need, which is, depending on the device, you know, 10 times the amount of bandwidth or up to maybe 100 times the, the bandwidth. And all of that's available. Uh, we have, uh, there is a USB specification for MIDI 2, and the MIDI Association is currently working on uh, a specification for networking of MIDI 2. And so both of those transports are going to give us really the high bandwidth we need for these deeper or, or higher resolution controllers and the addition of per note controllers and so on. Great, and is this, will this be supported in, I, I imagine in software and hardware form? Like, um... Yeah, definitely. Um, the, uh, the hardware, um, we, we, we really tried to keep a, a, an ability for low cost hardware with simple little processors to be able to still do MIDI. And some devices for many years to come will still do MIDI 1.0 because there's nothing wrong with MIDI 1.0. It's really great at what it does. Um, and so, uh, but MIDI 2.0 adds things on top of that. And so uh, hardware from the simplest to the, to the more elaborate, uh, that it's really a gamut from MIDI 1.0 to MIDI 2.0 extended. And MIDI 2.0 is not a completely different world. The, the two integrate you know, quite closely together. And so uh, for hardware, uh, that's, you know, uh, there's a, a clear uh, path for us to add to what we've been doing with MIDI 1.0 for a lot of years. In terms of software, um, uh, software generally needs APIs to be, be available and, uh, and for the OSs. And so there's progress there um, uh, from the OS companies. You know, all the OS companies are members of the MIDI Association. Um, and, uh, you know, many of the largest software companies are also members, and they're well aware of MIDI 2.0. Uh, and so I think we'll see, we'll see good support from software and hardware. Great. And do you think, um, how, how are you able to like, accelerate the take-up for uh, MIDI 2.0 with MIDI, with MIDI 2.0 uh, with, say, manufacturers and software developers? 
Uh, well, one, one way we're doing that is providing tools. The MIDI Association has tools available. Uh, we have a, a software which is cross-platform called the MIDI Workbench. And it implements uh, MIDI 2.0 and is a test tool. Uh, and so if you're running a MIDI uh, device, device being software or hardware, it can talk to the workbench and the workbench can test its MIDI 2 capabilities. Um, and so the workbench is, um, is um, a great tool. This is another tool from Omino, my company. Uh, this is a, a prototyping hardware. And so this in itself is a MIDI 2.0 device and it's implemented on a Raspberry Pico. You know, Raspberry is a, a very open platform and we're providing MIDI 2 functionality, the, the, the bi-directional transactions of MIDI CI, that's MIDI capability inquiry, those are implemented on here, and the new protocol and the new uh, format we call the universal MIDI packet format, which can carry MIDI 1.0 and 2.0, all of that's on here, uh, in addition to USB interfaces um, and uh, also, 5-pin DIN is on here, so you can connect a, a, a MIDI 1.0 device, and we have translators in here. And so we provide tools like this. All MIDI Association members have access to get this. And in fact, the MIDI Association gives one free to all members. So you should join the MIDI Association if you'd like to get uh, these prototyping tools. Um, but currently, MIDI Association members are all cooperating in uh, adding to the, the source code on this and the workbench and we're vetting all of these things together and later this year these tools will be available to a wider set of developers. Excellent, excellent. And uh, wh when do you think it will be first implemented? Who's, where's going to be the first place to see this, the 2.0 happen? Well, the first, first place is in funny little tools like this. They're not really things for musicians, but we have MIDI 2 devices that people are testing with like this. And a few other companies in the MIDI Association have their earliest prototypes. And we're, we're sharing with each other and working together uh, to make sure that MIDI 2.0 is what we expect it to be. And so far that's going well. Um, we, uh, I would expect that the first MIDI 2 devices for musicians and uh, home studio owners and producers and so on was probably towards the end of 2022 and starting more in 2023. And it'll take some time to transition. And there's, there's many different features of MIDI 2.0. And so some devices will implement, um, for example, the, the idea of profiles, which is uh, all pianos should work the same way. They all use a sustain pedal and keys. and so they should all work the same way. So we have profile specs to define those kinds of things. Uh, then we have something called property exchange, which is a deeper dive into products. Um, and so it's uh, using JSON, I'm getting a little bit technical, but JSON uh, properties inside of System Exclusive. You could do a deep dive and say, tell me what property is being addressed by controller number 84? And, and, and the thing will, will say, well, that's, that's the uh, release time on envelope number three and the device will be able to inform you of that. Wow. And so different manufacturers will start to implement different things, but it's not until we get more manufacturers start to implement a wider base that, that this will really become reality for every musician that MIDI 2 becomes a big part of their setup. So I kind of see like a five-year plan where, where, you, where you start to see MIDI 2 become more and more valuable. And I think five years from now, we'll see MIDI 2.0 will be really um, available, widely available in a lot of products. Excellent. Well, it's, it's a really exciting development, I think, because we're going to have sort of really nuanced changes in instruments, almost uh, acoustically styled electronic instruments with that, with that larger range of, of control. So I imagine there'll be, uh, yeah, hardware controllers, which will be very expressive and lots of interesting sure. things on the horizon. Sure. You know, I, I'm sure uh, many viewers here are familiar with MPE. Uh, the, um, and, and in some ways MPE is kind of a precursor to MIDI 2, showing some of the things that are possible with MIDI 2.0. We do expect that MIDI 2.0 will prompt more expressive musical instruments um, and, and is a protocol that allows us to transfer more musical expression than we were able to with MIDI 1.0. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for telling us about that today, Mike. Much appreciated. Thanks, I'm, I'm happy to, to, to meet you and talk to you about this. Cheers, thank you. MIDI 2. <laughs> so hi, we're with uh, Pete from uh, the MIDI Association. Hey Chris, thanks for having me here today. Um, yeah, I'm Pete Brown, I'm on the executive board of the MIDI Association and uh, I also work uh, with Microsoft, or excuse me, in Microsoft on uh, Windows products. 
Great. And um, yeah, so how, how is the development of, uh, of MIDI 2.0 in terms of um, yeah, on the software side of things? Uh, it, it's actually been good. Uh, we've had, um, for example, Apple and Google now have MIDI 2.0 APIs uh, in their operating systems, uh, and Microsoft is working on theirs. So we're kind of the holdout here that's keeping some of the, the companies from releasing some of the hardware products. So I know knowing that those are waiting in the wings, I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, but we have a project that's uh, in progress now, and it's going to get, uh, I think, a little more attention over the summer here to implement MIDI 2.0, as well as some updates to our MIDI 1.0 stack in Windows. Uh, and we're working with a lot of different software companies and hardware companies to help make sure that we design something that's um, actually usable and meets all the MIDI specs and, and uh, is usable by the, both the hardware and the software companies. Um, one other thing that's interesting about that is uh, we're gonna do ours as open source. So as much as possible, the drivers and the APIs and everything that we need to implement MIDI 2.0 on Windows uh, will be made available to the public to use in any way that they want, not just on Windows, if they want to port it to another operating system. Uh, and of course, so they can contribute to the project and um, augment our own engineering team who's working on the APIs and drivers and stuff there. Yeah, that sounds great. Open source is, uh, yeah, you, you, who knows what world you'll open up or, yeah. the, or the, the, yeah, your customers will open up with that. Right, and there are a lot of smart people out uh, in the community who've been developing drivers for different operating systems over the years, like virtual MIDI and Bluetooth MIDI and stuff, and being able to bring some of those folks a little bit closer into the fold and have them contribute to a project is going to be a really big deal for us. And so how are developers, uh, yeah, from a development side, um, have you got anyone involved uh, or, or uh, has anyone started working on MIDI 2.0 and implementing it in, in their sort of stuff? Yeah, so I know that some of the developers, I put my, my MIDI association hat back on, some of the developers who have been working with Apple over time here have uh, been working on uh, including MIDI 2.0 in their applications, same thing with Google now that they have uh, those APIs in Android. On our side, uh, we're working hand in hand with the software developers during the development of MIDI 2.0. Uh, but obviously right now, since we don't have an API in Windows that they can use, they can't really write to it. But we do have commitments from some fairly large software developers to kind of co-develop with us and implement MIDI 2.0 as we implement it so that it'll be available uh, in their products on pretty much day one, which I mean, that's, that's how you get something like this adopted uh, in the community is by having everything available at that same time. And so I'm pretty excited about that. Excellent, excellent. And, and for you personally, like what's on your roadmap? What's still to do for you with uh, MIDI 2.0? What, what's coming? Uh, so I'm probably what I'm most excited about working on in MIDI 2.0, at least on the, the Windows side, is some of the tools and some of the enhancements that have been requested over the years. So. For example, we get requests from software developers all the time to be able to provide things in Windows to make it easier to debug MIDI connections so that when you're on like a tech support call with a big DAW company, being able to have them uh, say, hey, just run this quick command and get a uh, dump of all the information about your MIDI system and to make sure that they see exactly what they think they, they should expect to see on that system. Like those tools and technologies there are, are a big deal for me, I think. Uh, and I'm going to be directly involved in that. I, I lead up the, the open source part of our project at Microsoft, and the tools are a really big part of that. Um, and so that's probably what I'm most excited about here. Excellent. And what about portable? What about portable devices? Is this going to be something that you could maybe use on a phone? Um, yeah, yeah, so... Uh, like out in the park, perhaps? Right. So Google has, uh, as part of their Android product, uh, and I believe the Apple uh, implementation is also on iOS as well. Those clearly are going to work on, um, uh, on those phone devices. And as the MIDI Association and the, the, the technical standards committees work on uh, new transports for, say, over Wi-Fi or over networking or over Bluetooth, uh, they'll be able to take advantage of those. And then on our side, uh, Windows runs on both Intel processors and ARM processors, and we're making sure that everything that we do here is going to run on ARM processors as well. So um, the more portable uh, devices, more tablet form factor will be uh, something that can support MIDI 2.0 as well. Great. And, and uh, how about for like collaborations? What about for people collaborating from remote locations? Is that going to be something that you're, you're doing? Yeah, so are we working on something like that right this minute? Nothing that I can talk about. Uh, I 
I love the idea of collaboration. I have, I have a 16 year old and 13 year old uh, kids and everything that they do right now is social. Everything they do has a Discord component. Everything that they do has, a, um, uh, has some sort of streaming association with it. Or they do, uh, say, even stuff like just drawing things in a paint program. But they'll do that socially with each other and they'll play kind of like charades and things to try to guess uh, what's, uh, um, what's on there. So I can definitely see a role for collaborative work here, even at the, those lowest levels with MIDI 2.0. Uh, but we don't have anything, like we don't have a specific product in mind right now. There is um, a really interesting product uh, that we use in the MIDI Association, uh, which is, Mike, it's uh, MIDIable, right? Is that, uh, MIDIable. Yeah, MIDIable. Sorry, Mike's over here is uh, uh, making sure I behave. Um, <laughs> so the, uh, uh, the MIDIable project lets you remotely collaborate and play MIDI as part of an online uh, experience with a whole bunch of people. Think like Zoom, but it has a performance aspect as well. And uh, we also use that as part of our normal like executive board meetings and everything. So it's uh, a super fun aspect there, which I certainly I could see that supporting MIDI 2.0 in the future as well. Great, excellent. Um, well, thank you very much for your time today. Really Thanks. exciting times. <laughs> thank you very much and uh, say hi to Nick for me and I, I really appreciate being on the show today.